Hey there, welcome back to the final part of this week's episode of Leading Our Own Way. I hope you found inspiration in our guest journey this week. Today, we'll leave you with some key takeaways and actionable insights that you can lean on. Now let's wrap up with some powerful lessons that can help guide you on your own path. Don't forget to tune in for a brand new guest next week on Monday. But for now, enjoy this week's. Please subscribe to the channel if you don't already as well. Have a great weekend. We'll see you soon. Wow. Oh. Well, is there anything is there anything that we've missed then before we get into how you're leading your own way and you're recovering the steps? Because, I, you know, I know the viewers will be able to take so much away from you and your uh, reflect on. They already know the ending because of how we started the podcast, which yeah. is, I think is beautiful. Right. I, yeah. think I want to start off with that. Um, whether it's in detail or the, the way you did it was great because we can go into it. Um, yeah. And I know the viewers will be able to take pieces and tools and skill sets and use them in their own way that's specific to their scenario and right. their journey. Um, where uh, you start, I'm, I'm quite okay. speechless if I'm honest, so I don't know, I know where to go I, with it. But I know um, I, you, <laughs> where, yeah, where can we take your journey now? How does it start to look for you? Now you've okay. made this pivotal change, you've separated. Let's go. Okay, so I, I did make a very gigantic change, and I'm afraid to tell you that it wasn't in the wake of the divorce from his father, it was many years later. Okay, um, when my son was older, I actually dated a man that was a very toxic individual. And even though everything in my body was screaming no, because I had started to do some kind of internal work at that point, yeah. those old stories about what I deserved were louder and I married him. So I got married. So we're not done. Time. We're not done. We're not done, but I'm not going to take too long on this because I, I genuinely don't want to. Okay. For the reason that this doesn't have a lot of power over me, but this was the pivotal moment in my life. So I, okay. I was with this man for several years. I was married to him for one year. He was incredibly toxic, um, abusive. I got to the point where I was felt in danger being in partnership with him, and I divorced him. He stalked me for two years. It was a very, very scary and Fuck. difficult time. And I choose it. I'm... I understand why it happened. I understand why I needed to go through it because it was my rock fucking bottom. There was a day when I thought he's going to kill me or he's going to hurt my child. And I, at that point, it was my wake up call. We all talk about that. Everybody has their moment. And that was my moment. And I, when I was able to get away from him and to have the dust settle, I made the decision to start looking at the person who was creating this. And it was now me. It wasn't the people in my life. It wasn't the adults. I wasn't a child. I was a grown up. And I chose this relationship where I was walking on eggshells all the time and hiding and terrified. Why was I doing that? And so that began this journey. That began this, this journey that I'm going to smile about now because I started that 12 years ago. And I, I met some really extraordinary people who I'm still friends with who kind of helped me to start to see that I actually had some agency in my own life that it was actually my responsibility, my life, and that even though I had been victimized in the past, I got to choose whether I was going to be a victim at this point. And I, I wanted to live. You know, when I left that second marriage and I got to that point where I was afraid for actually my life at times, I also wanted to kill myself. I also had been convinced by this manipulative person that I was not worth anything and that my son was better off without me. And so I, I got to the most desperate point I could have gotten to without taking any action to harm myself. And, and so I sought therapy. I found somatic therapists. I found uh, medicine people. I, I started just doing – I did Landmark Forum. I, I did anything and everything I could possibly find to go into that space to understand, is it possible that I could change my life? Is it possible – that if I made different choices and if I decided to believe differently about myself, is it possible that I've actually chose to love myself and learn how to protect myself and how to make good choices that I might actually be okay? And it didn't happen overnight, and it's a big journey, and I've done a lot of work over the last, uh, particularly the last decade, and I have done almost every kind of modality you can imagine. I have, you know, I've, I've done medicine journeys. I've done incredibly difficult um, 
inner child work and shadow work. And I've worked with a multitude of different people. And that's how I have the knowledge that I have at this point, because I've done the dark, difficult work. And I was having a conversation with someone today about it is very often so much easier to stay in the trauma because it's familiar than it is to choose to turn away from it and to believe that I had value and to believe that I was worth something. And that's what I've done over the last 12 years is I've done a tremendous amount of work. I have fallen in love with myself. I have met Melissa, that little girl and invited her back into my heart. And I've spent the last couple of years just making friends with her and telling her that she's okay and that I'm not leaving her again. And that has been incredibly transformative for me, incredibly profound. And in the last 10 years, for the last 10 years, I've been with this incredible human being, my third husband, the love of my life, who is such a solid human being and so extraordinary. I pinch myself every day. I'm so lucky to have him in my life. But I, I have him in my life because I did the work to heal myself and because I called it in. I told the right. universe, I deserve it, and I want it. And You deserve it. You, you're not lucky. You deserve it. I believe that. And you've, Thank you've, you. You don't you, – there's an, there's, I don't believe there's luck. You created that luck, and you created it by working on yourself, like you just said. But you deserve it, more importantly. Thank you. And I've, he and I have done a lot of work together. The journey yeah. only intensified with meeting him because he has this incredible – way of holding space for me. I'm a lot. I come with a lot. It's not easy to be me. I, I deal with, when I met him, I dealt with incredible panic attacks and anxiety. I would wake up screaming very often at night. I was, it, it was, there was, it's big stuff going on in here. And, for sure. and sometimes it's, it's really challenging. You have to hold a lot of space for, for what this body carries because while I've done a lot of work, it's a lifelong journey and I will continually yeah. be healing my trauma. It doesn't all happen. Just, you don't. No. you're not done. No, you know, you're either working not. on it or you're at the mercy of it. And I'm just choosing to go arms open into it with courage because I understand that on the other side of it is more freedom and more wisdom and more truth. And that's where I'm at. That's what I want for myself. Yeah. And I take full responsibility for my life now. I, that's the thing that I had to learn, and it took a long time, that I am responsible for my life. I am responsible for me. I, get, I can decide that I hate everything that happened and that I'm the victim and that my life was awful and unfair. And in a lot of ways, sure, it was unfair. And I choose it because here I am, and I love myself, and I love where I am in my life, and I love my capacity to shine a light for other people and to help other people to see their value and their worth and it just means everything to me. And so in February of this year, I started a podcast about it. <laughs> yeah. I love yeah. it. I'm yeah. going to have to tune in. I'm going to subscribe and everything. And, and yeah. But we, with you, for those who are listening, who can take peace of listen to this all the way up to this point, who need you or want you, if, they, if they're in that spot where you were at, at the point where you, you made the change to fall in love with yourself, what do you do daily now to set yourself up for success? For success That's day? a great question. There's been a lot of tools that I've implemented and had to come back to over and over and remind myself. But one of the main things that I do is at least once a day, I look in the mirror and I say, I love you. Oh, that's good. And I very often I could be driving to the grocery store or whatever. I'll look over in my car and I will see my seven year old self sitting there and I'll say, Hey, Melissa. And I just welcome her, you know, and I protect, I feel very protective of her. And the more love I give her, the more love I receive now. And it's been this, I, I'm going to tell you right now, two, three, four years ago, if somebody said inner child, I would have been like, Ugh. I was just so like, Ugh. like, because I had just separated myself from my, my child self. I didn't want anything mm -hmm. to do with her, but now I did a really powerful mushroom journey about a year and a half ago. And that was where I reunited with her and I had one of the most profound experiences of my entire life and it was transformative and it was like I rebirthed myself. And every day I remind myself in writing, I remind myself in my meditation, I remind myself in my word 
that I am a beautiful human being worthy of love and worthy of safety and worthy of joy. And there are days I forget and then I have to remember again. It's just a constant, you know, it's a constant commitment to myself sure. to, to do that. And, and honestly, every day I try, to, I try to do something for someone else. I try to show up as a light in my Facebook group, on my podcast, in my relationships. I coach, I coach some. I lead retreats. I, I, it's really important to me to help other women, especially other people in general, but especially women, to see their light and their value and to believe that it's possible to survive because I have, and I, the odds were stacked against me. The, 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 more than stacked against you. Um, but Melissa deserves it as well, doesn't she? Yeah, I do it for her. You know, someone asked me at a party a few months, a couple months ago, like, why would I put myself through going back and telling these stories? And I said, I pulled, I have a photo of her, I carry in my purse. And this time I had it in my pocket and I pulled it out the of my pocket one. and I said, I do it for her. That one? Yeah. I said, I do it for her. She deserves it. She does. She deserves for her story to be told. She deserves to be heard and she deserves all the love in the world. And so do we all. Mm. And I have to start, we always have to start with ourselves. It has to start <laughs> with us. I could yeah. never have love or love other people or love my life until I loved myself. It's just, it's absolutely critical. And it's so, it's so important. And I wish that I, I wish for everyone. I wish that for everyone because it's opened up a wellspring of joy for me yeah. and possibility. And I'm com now my life is committed to creativity and being a light. That's it. And that's a nice way to bring into uh, what you do now. Then let's, let's yeah. finish off this uh, episode with what you do and how you lead in your own way, because you've got some beautiful things you've got going on apart from the courageous of Fuck podcast and Facebook group that I've um, shown earlier i've yep. got some other pictures here as well that i think uh worthy definitely worthy of sharing i'm just going to move sure. my notes out of the way so i can see how i'm positioning myself <laughs> but just to show your personality and your character <laughs> which i absolutely love um if you if you are seeing <laughs> on youtube and spotify <laughs> kyle is uh <laughs> i'm a goofball <laughs> a goofball she's been a goofball so make sure you can come and see it at some point it's yeah. funny yeah. and um I am going to bring this picture down here because you've got a bit of a story to share there as well. Oh, um, but I'm just going to show some of your artwork um, oh, yeah. and your creative side. Um, That's which a you painting, used. yeah. Mm -hmm. and they're That's beautiful. A... They're absolutely stunning. Thank and you. Um, you can see the style that Kyle has and some of the resources she uses. Mm. Oh, yeah. These were from a photo shoot I did um, for my art. Yeah. Yeah. I usually have that much paint on my hands. <laughs> That's good. Show us your hand now. Do you have any hands? Do you have any paint now. in your hands right now? No. now? Because right now I'm illustrating a book and that's digital. And so uh, I have clean hands for, for yeah. the moment because I'm so immersed in, in illustrating the book. Um, so yeah, just to what I'm doing now. So I'm a fine artist. I, I am a mixed media fine artist. I show in galleries. I have, you know, I do events. I do all kinds of stuff with that. That's really important to me. And I also illustrate. I've all, I've illustrated for many, many years and I'm working on my third children's book now. I'm not the author of this book. My friend back in Los Angeles is the author, and we published one last year, and I'm working on the second one now, which will come out hopefully within the next six months. And that's deeply meaningful to me because the joy I see in children's eyes when they look at these things and they read these stories, it's just, again, it's me feeding that inner child her the joy that she didn't get, and, and so very <laughs> fulfilling. Um, you want to Let's show that talk, picture and just talk about I that? I will do, but I want to talk about the first, the other book, the food book. Uh, so before oh, we yeah. come on to those two books, can you show this one? Because this, I love this. It's right down my alley. This is something I massively talk about right now with <laughs> foods and moods and the mind. Um, yeah. As you can see, my book's behind me. I'm, I read a lot about the brain and human biology and not just mental wellness, mental fitness, but food has been a major problem. And I changed mine because I, you know, something about you don't know about, this is not so much my issue, but I had an organ removed from, you know, holes that I was filling. I had my go my gallbladder removed and um, sepsis yeah. set in. I was 20 minutes away from being in a coma and nearly dying. Mm -hmm. And I changed my journey. Again, that wasn't my trauma, by the way. That wasn't, I, I, mine was workplace bullying. Um, but this is not about me. However, I changed my food and this is why I'm so passionate about food. Do I still have a hamburger here and there? Yeah, I do. And do I have chocolate here and there? Yes, absolutely. I do. Movie night last night, we watched three men and a baby <laughs> and we, uh, we had chocolate. So I just want to let you know, I've not turned into somebody that is, you know, 
fixed on not having anything. Um, yeah. But I'm definitely aware now and I have cut it down to like a 90 10 rule. Um, so this is why I want to talk about this book briefly because I didn't know about this book, if I'm honest. So I want to I want you to touch on this book, please. And I'd I love do. a copy, by the way. Oh, I'm, you're going to get one. And it's funny because I'm not as disciplined as you, but um, I have a whole history with food and it's really interesting. But this is a young woman who is in Los Angeles. Her name's Taylor Morgan. Mm. I'm pretty sure the website's called foodmoods dot or foodmoodsthebook.com. I'll get it to you because yeah, I would we'll love put it in to the show notes for her. Sure. She is she's a beautiful human being. She's a single mother. This was a heartfelt project that she she sacrificed so much to make this book happen because she feels so strongly. And I'll show you this is a, a this is an illustration of her son that she dedicated the book to. And the book is really fun and colorful and it really talks about in, in a way that very young children can understand what food does to you. Why mm. sometimes you feel angry? Are you hangry? Are you hungry? Are, have you eaten too much sugar? Are you having the zinga zang zooms? And are you, you know, so it's, it's, it's very educational and it also has an index at the back for parents full of all kinds of nutritional information. So it's a really beautiful project and I'm very honored to have, have done it. And I would love to see it go out to as many families as possible. So we'll see if we can make that happen by sharing a link, but I'll get you a copy of it. And it's um, called just food moods. I could, uh, because <laughs> I educate, I go into schools every day and teach. So I could, I could take that in with me and, and have this backstory to how I've got the book and the importance of it. Cause I'm, I'm always, yeah, I could read that to hundreds of kids a week. Seriously. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so I'd love, I'd love to get one. And um, you can have to let me know where I can get it from, but uh, also um, on the website, just, on the website it's not distributed because she doesn't have the funds for that yet so she just has the website so okay um but i'll we'll we'll share the link with people yeah for sure yeah it's yeah. so important i mean we, we're going through a world right now where we're getting diagnosed with left right and center of different things and obviously that's not the podcast we won't go into the depths of that and i don't want to get myself into yeah. trouble but some of the observations i've made and some of the things that i read you know this food is one of the root causes of most of the issues going on in the world right now and we just don't understand it at a cellular level of the effects of, you know, of our cells and our mitochondria and our moons and our neurotransmitters and our head. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just, I'm so passionate about it now. And I think we could definitely make a change, but who am I? Eh? You just have to sort, you have to have the influence where you can and just live your best life. And, you know, we all do our small part, right? Yeah. And another way of getting your purpose across to the world is, uh, this, I'm assuming, is this your second book and you've got the third one coming out? The one, oh, the, the food moods is a one, one off. Um, one off. Yeah. The, the book that you're going to talk about next was the first. And then I'm working on the second now. Sorry. Got you. Yeah. Yeah. I know the reflection will be showing. <laughs> um, yeah. A little how, bit. how do you pronounce the name of it? E Ebenezer. Ebenezer. Ebenezer finds a reason. Here you go. I love that. I, I was, book. I was worried about pronouncing it wrong. Oh, there you go. And um, if, for those who are looking at the picture, I'm showing a picture of Kyle with the co-author, and uh -huh. um, I didn't click for a long time, even though I'd seen this picture. But I'm a friend. I'm a friend's anorak. I know pretty oh. much every quote of yeah. the show. And yeah. um, the person you wrote the book with is Janice from Friends. Maggie. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And to be clear, she wrote the book. She, she wrote. wrote the book. She wrote the story many years ago. She and you I met. It. Yes. So she and I met about 13 or so years ago. I yeah. joined a choir in Los Angeles that she was the director of. And over the years, we, I sang with the choir for many years and we became friends. And I gave her a piece of artwork one day and it was a drawing of this little hedgehog. And she saw it and she said, oh my God, you have to illustrate this book I wrote many years ago. And so we started that process during COVID and, and got that first book done. And yeah. And so this came out, there's so many great things that have happened because of this book. She and I went to Uvalde and gave all the kids their free books and had this a beautiful event. We've, it's just been, it's just been a magical, beautiful experience. And, and she, honestly, she's so gifted and she wrote the second book so quickly. And so we started that pretty recently and I'm just knee deep in it and it's going to be awesome. It's the same characters plus some new ones. And it's just, it's a delightful book. It's a yeah. delightful book. Yeah. And I'm very can I proud have the of honor, it. Can I have the honor of putting it on my shelf? Absolutely. You're going to get both of these. <laughs> I want all three. <laughs> well, yeah. The other one has to get, I have to finish it first. Um, yes, of course. <laughs> I got some drawing to do actually when we hang up. 
So I've been yeah, working wow. on it pretty feverishly, but just to kind of circle back and finish the story about what I'm doing, yeah. I, I also do still do graphic design. Um, I've been a creative director, art director, designer for many, many years. And so any kind of visual design I do. And so at any point I might be working on a myriad of different projects. I do some experience design. Uh, I, it's kind of runs the gamut. I, I, all the creative things. Um, but currently my time is split between um, the illustration, the graphic design, my podcast, and I also am a Reiki practitioner and sound healer with my husband. So we have a business where we do that regularly. Um, gosh, what else is going on? <laughs> the retreat, I have a retreat coming up uh, yeah. in a week in Santa Fe that I'm leading for women. Uh, yeah. That's going to be beautiful. Um, yeah, and I'm just, I'm deeply connected to my Facebook group and deeply con committed to the podcast. It's something that's really important for me. And, and I'm, you know, looking at doing some other things. I'm going to be actually co-hosting another podcast that's coming out in a couple of months. Um, that's about What's the that arts. About? Um, it's about the arts. I don't think I can share it yet, but it's yep. a media company. And um, so I'll be interviewing writers, directors, poets, uh, filmmakers, people like that. Really? Yeah. Well, by the by, the time this uh, I publish this episode, maybe it'll be up and ready to go, and I can I can share it. Maybe. Oh yeah, possibly. Quite yeah. quite possibly. We're going to start recording in the next uh, couple of weeks. Nice. So it could be. So yeah, all of that, and just you know, always hungry for ways I can serve people and share my gifts and um, help people heal and also just create beauty. You know. I think people watching this can just look at you now and how you are. I know you've been, I know you've shared a lot of your darkness and I appreciate you and I thank you for being open and, and mm -hmm. vulnerable on the show. But I, I really think people can see the way you're talking, even just the way you've been just been talking about your purpose and, uh, and what you're doing now. There's a light that is shining out of you and it's crystal clear. Mm -hmm. I think you crystally, <laughs> I've just repeated myself, but Chris, I think you clearly know what you stand for what you're doing, what your purpose, and that's typically how I end it. But before we do go down there, um, if somebody was going through something similar and is watching this and we can reach out to them, if you could give them a piece of advice based on everything you've been through in your recovery, what would that, what could or would that piece of advice be? Boy, that's such a good, that's such a good question. Mm. I know I've put you on the spot there. You have. No, it's okay. I'm fine with it. I'm just trying to, I want to responsibly answer that in, in, in a way that feels really honest for me. You know, I'm working with someone. I just finished working with someone for several weeks coaching this young woman. And I remember saying to her, she came into the coaching environment with me with a lot of beliefs, negative beliefs about herself. And I remember saying to her one day, what if every flaw that you think you have is actually your superpower? What if you are here to do something so meaningful and purposeful, you may not even ever understand what it is, but your presence in people's lives is incredibly important. And you, it is your birthright to be joyful and to be happy and to celebrate yourself exactly as you are. And that message got through to her and I've seen some shifts in her. And I, I think that I, I would want to say what I wanted someone to say to me is that you fucking matter. You matter. Your well-being, your happiness, your heart, your safety matter. What, 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 what messy moment do you think you realized that you mattered? I think I know the answer, oh. but what was that messy moment for you? I think it was actually after I had left my second husband and I had started the healing journey and I was in this group of people who were inviting me into conversations that were so healing and so deep and they, they saw me and they reflected me back to me and they honored where I was and they supported me and gave me this belief that it's like I felt seen for the first time in my life and I felt included and wanted in the healthiest manner for the first time in my life. And that's one of the things I try to do with people because it's, I think that's really important for those of us who grow up with this belief that we don't matter. And we're that, you know, we're just, I mean, I believe I was cursed, do you but know? just that every human being is here for a reason. We are here for a purpose. We, it is our birthright to be loved and to feel safe. Safety is such a huge thing for me. Um, and I will say about, you know, what I've said today and about the podcast and about what I will continue doing is I think 
a lot of people can't talk about what's happened and they're all, we're all at different stages in our healing and wherever you are in your healing is perfect. As long as you're continuing to go toward the truth and to honor yourself and it is, it is delicate and tender work, but it is so worth it. I would not be alive today if I had not decided to do it. And I implore anyone to, to trust that it's worth it. It's worth it to go into the darkness and to revisit these wounds and to heal them through manners like therapy, through manners like if it works for you, medicine. Um, it, there's so many different ways of approaching it, including contacting me. I, I do some coaching. Um, come to my Facebook group, you know, uh, all are welcome. But my point is those of us who are where I am right now, who have done the amount of work that I've done, I still have really bad days. I still mm -hmm. have darkness that I have to face, but I can sit here with you and have this conversation and I can even laugh. And so I feel that because I've gotten to this point, it is my duty. It is my honor and it is my privilege to try to share these stories and normalize the conversations around them and demonstrate that even in the face of life's greatest challenges, we are more powerful and courageous than we know, mm -hmm. you know, and we are resilient and there is life. There is light beyond tragedy. There is light after the darkness. It's both are present and you, you get to have both if you really want it, you know, let people help you. My last question. Yeah. I, I feel like I have to rearrange my structure a little bit because I asked this question, but I always feel that it's been answered. But if you could put it into one line, I've, after 38 years, figured out how to put mine into one line. What, mm. What's your one, what do you think your purpose is in one line? What is your purpose oh, on this planet? To bring more beauty to the world through my art and to help other people see their value and to believe that anything is possible. That's about as simple as I can put it. <laughs> Love it. That's the perfect way to end. I normally do a bit of a spiel, but you've just ended it perfectly. And um, I don't want to end it any other way. So thank you. Kyle, um, thank you so much for joining me on my journey. Um, I, I hope you've enjoyed it. And I know a lot of people will be able to take so much away from uh, not only your stories, but more, more importantly, your recovery process, your therapeutic process uh, and, and what you're doing going into the future i normally ask what you what you're going to, going to be doing in the future but i feel like we've already covered all of that what does the future lie look, look like for you though personally do you think what if you're painting that picture of um neuroplasticity rewiring the brain what, what's your how, what you're manifesting for the future yeah, that's a good question. I'm manifesting carrying forward with the podcast. I am in the next couple of months bringing on guests. And it's very important for me that this is not just the Kyle show. Once I get the meat of my story shared, I want to then bring in other people and share their stories of courage because I think that's really, really important. So I definitely yeah. see the podcast going on and on, getting sponsorship, uh, developing into something much bigger. Um, I've done some public speaking and I'm feeling ready now to do that more around these conversations I've been having in the podcast. Um, it will look like also co-hosting another podcast, which I've mentioned before, and it will look like doing a lot more art, more retreats, finding more ways to connect deeply with people and to help each other heal. Beautiful. Well, I might need to take your advice on how to get my podcast sponsored and things like that. Cause you know, it's, it's doing pretty well, but I don't know how much for how to take it further in other, in already what I'm doing. So I might need your advice on that one, Kyle. We'll and, learn and together. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I, I feel like we're going to stay friends. I hope we yeah, do. Of course, um, we are. <laughs> I, yeah, absolutely. I, 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 I'm such a connection person, and and you can't, you won't be able to get rid of me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Most other people will laugh at that because they go, "Yeah, he's right." <laughs> <laughs> I'm a connector too, though. I love, I love connection, and I love, yeah. I, I, the more the merrier. The more friends, the merrier. Beautiful. Um, Kyle, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I really, really appreciate you joining us on Leading Our Own Way. You're definitely leading your own way and it's beautiful. And um, to everybody else who has joined in, I appreciate you guys here as well. And um, until next week from Kyle and I, uh, have, a great, <laughs> have a great week. Thank you so much. Appreciate thank you, it. Kyle. Thanks for listening and watching Leading Our Own Way. So we can stay together forever and share more incredible journeys, please subscribe to the channel. That way you won't miss next week's episode and what that amazing guest has to offer to the world. Please support Leading Our Own Way and we'll get you on next week's episode.